about a month ago I posted a video on using the pick and place machine and the reflow oven to process these boards. So this is a pallet of 20 small module boards and I had a few complaints that I didn't show any uh, close-up images of the uh, individual steps in the process. So this is just a very brief video to uh, give you a, a few close-up views of what we're looking at and uh, hopefully give you some idea as to what we're aiming for when we are processing boards like this. So I do a, a lot of these boards, um, probably several thousand a year, and I have all different types of boards. So what I tend to do is uh, order the boards and I get a, a stencil made at the same time, which is this uh, stainless steel sheet here. And it enables me to apply the solder paste uh, very efficiently. And uh, when they're shipped, they come in these um, uh, with these backing sheets. They're just uh, offcuts of material that the board manufacturers use. But they are quite useful as uh, using for the uh, base of the uh, solder paste uh, application system. So you can buy um, the solder paste application jigs and machines. Um, I do have them. They're quite expensive, but I find it's much quicker and easier to uh, use something like this, especially with uh, the smaller boards. So all I do is take some off cuts of the boards and the board just has to be the same thickness as the one that you're trying to process. So these particular ones are 0.8 millimeters thick. And all you do is you uh, glue down the off cuts so that the board you're trying to process uh, will fit uh, relatively snugly into the gap that's left. So what you're looking for is to make sure that it, it can't move around. If it can move around then you will get issues. Uh, and so the first part of the, the process is to fit the pallet into the jig. Like I said, it doesn't need to be particularly tight um, but you want less than uh, a fraction of the size of the smallest pad movement. So uh, otherwise if uh, you have too much movement you'll find the solder paste is uh, not accurately applied to the pads. Uh, then uh, another piece at the bottom to stop the, um, the the solar mask from bowing too much. I prefer a slight amount of bow, it makes it easier to uh, take it off without pulling the paste back off the board but that's entirely up to uh, your personal preference. Um, the actual mask itself very thin sheets and you need to make sure that when you order the mask you order the correct thickness and the thickness of the mask you order will dictate the amount of paste that you're going to put down on any particular pad and that is entirely dependent on the um, if you like the philosophy of your pad design so uh, it might be you want smaller pads with more paste or larger pads with thinner paste and that's um, where you can uh, control the way the components move around during the reflow process. Um, so once you've got the stencil fitted I tape it at one edge and that means I can very easily uh, just swap out the board I'm applying paste to uh, without having to realign it every time. And then the next step is just to load up something uh, with uh, the paste and then you can just apply the paste so it's just downward pressure you're not trying to drag it along otherwise you'll force it underneath the stencil and it won't be accurately applied and all you're trying to do here is just press it down through the holes don't overdo it you're not trying to uh, force more through than will fill the holes that are in the stencil and then gently scrape off the excess and make sure that you have all the holes f uh, filled don't keep going over and over it, you'll end up uh, spreading it out underneath the stencil and then once you've done that just lift up the stencil and you're ready to put the board into the pick and place machine. So I'll go and uh, put the board into the pick and place machine. With this particular job I don't need this uh, side support on so I can remove it but it, again it depends on how you've got the pick and place machine set up. Uh, but this can now go into the pick and place. We'll have a quick look here under the microscope at this and see if we've got the paste properly applied. So as you can see it looks correct. We're looking for nice well-defined shapes. We don't want it sort of squeezed uh, out all over the place uh, and we want fairly nice square edges 
uh, so it's well defined and uh, properly applied to each of the individual pads. It should all be roughly the same thickness and we should have a slight surround showing uh, on the, uh, the pad. You don't want too much if it's overhanging uh, you could end up with bridges between adjacent pads uh, and also it's important to understand that in the reflow process the action of the solder paste is partly to pull the, align the uh, components into alignment and if you're finding the components are kind of flipping up standing on end or moving uh, across to adjacent pads then most likely you either didn't have the stencil in the right place when you applied the paste or the stencil's too thick uh, or there's something wrong with the design of the pads that you're using for the particular components. So I'll go and get this on the pick and place machine. I won't show that, I've shown that in previous um, videos, uh, but I'll bring back the board once it's had the components applied. Okay, so I have the board back from the pick and place machine. If you haven't seen the previous videos, then uh, for the pick and place for this job, I use a CHM T36VA. So it's a fairly low cost uh, Chinese pick and place machine. Works extremely well. And um, I'll be running around 30 of these boards today. And uh, that comes up to about 15,000 components. And um, yeah, it'll probably take seven or eight hours to run all the uh, pallets and uh, I normally get uh, one or two um, misplaced components in that uh, type of run so uh, it is a very efficient uh, machine once you get it set up properly average uh, placement speed is about uh, two and a half thousand components per hour uh, I use both it's a dual head machine and I do use both heads and uh, it does make a very efficient um, system when uh, used um, with a, a stencil like this and, and pallets. Uh, sorry if, if the lighting here is poor, it's not uh, my usual um, video location, so hopefully you can see what, uh, what we're looking at. Um, what we'll do now is get this into the reflow oven, and uh, again, sorry if there's a annoying whining in the background, that is the reflow oven. Uh, I can't turn it off, it is running uh, continuously today, so uh, I'll get this particular pallet um, flowed and then we'll have another look at it and uh, a few close-ups under the microscope. Okay I've got the board in the reflow oven. Um, try to ignore the noise there's no way of uh, stopping that it's just the cooling fan and this is uh, very irritating. Um, so we'll get this closed up this is the oven that I've shown uh, being modified in previous videos so it gives uh, much better performance than the standard T962A. I've got the profile set for these particular boards and we'll get it running. Okay, so that's the board processed. I'll stop the beeper. 
And what I can do now is take the board back over, we'll look at it under the microscope, have a close look and see how the soldering came out. Okay, so here we have the board out of the reflow oven and you can see on first glance it doesn't look too bad but if we have a look at the soldering under the microscope so you can see that the uh, quality of the soldering is extremely good and uh, all the joints are looking uh, nice and bright and shiny all the components have been pulled into their proper positions uh, as I said that's part of the purpose of the reflow process and uh, what I'll do now is uh, break a couple of these off so these are scored uh, to enable them to be separated easily and uh, what I'll do is uh, just uh, flux wash a couple of these and we'll have another look under the microscope to see uh, how they look once they've been cleaned up. Okay so once it's been given a flux bath you can see it comes up uh, very nice and clean and um, that's really what you're aiming for you want nice bright uh, clear solid joints you don't want them to look uh, grey or, or cloudy and um, obviously you don't want to damage the components by overheating them uh, the components should all be pulled into the central location so we'll have a quick look at this under the microscope so we can see uh, exactly uh, how they look I'm going to uh, capture software on the microscope so I'll just take some uh, snapshots Uh, but you can see that the quality of the soldering is uh, everything you need it to be. It's nicely flowed, it's, um, all the components are in the right locations, nice and centred. And you have uh, a nice um, kind of curve to the soldered joint. And uh, that's it. If you want any more information on this then uh, please leave a comment.